morning, everyone. Uh, Bill Holland here for what is always a very uh, interesting uh, uh, session with the um, entrepreneurial panel. Before we get started, uh, Tiffany wanted me to make sure that I told everybody that um, uh, given that uh, we uh, have Clarence Harris and her here in the uh, center, and uh, we have Ellis King, who I'm going to call King Cuz. Um, Ellis, from uh, this point forward, given your branding, um, on virtually, if you would um, uh, show yourselves um, when you have questions and all of that sort of thing, we will, um, uh, it'll make the uh, session that much more uh, interesting. So uh, let me get through a few introductions here, and um, then we'll uh, take advantage of the questions you've already started. Of course, you can post a chat throughout the, uh, throughout the hour, and we will um, take advantage of the, uh, of the knowledge in the room. Um, I want to start with Clarence Harris, um, actually, because he has something I don't know about, and I thought I knew him pretty well through the uh, SBDC, but he's an entrepreneur, entrepreneur who earned his Bachelor of Science degree in accounting at Norfolk State University, and um, he got a Master of Science in accounting at uh, Old Dominion. On top of this, we have an accountant uh, who has a Master of uh, Music Theory, and we'll talk about that in, uh, in just, a li um, uh, just a little bit. Um, he, uh, he is also an adjunct professor at Norfolk State and, um, and a CPA. Um, he has uh, been doing financial and tax, tax strategies for business professionals, for startups, for home-based businesses like many of you in the room. And um, I'm uh, frankly uh, looking forward to having him explain his, uh, his innovative way to reinforce education through Hip Hop Amp. Am I saying that right, Hip Hop and Amp? Is that how you so went from there? You know, I, I reinforce it through hip hop. So, very good, very good. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, he's a real friend of the Small Business Development Center and the uh, Hampton Roads Black Chamber of Commerce uh, has offered his services to us more times than I can count, so more to come. Tiffany, of course, you've known as my, um, as, uh, my partner in crime here throughout the center, but she is actually the owner of Artisanpreneur Consulting. That's a one-stop shop where creatives can learn to uh, transform, as she says, her their artistic passions into a sustainable and scalable business model. In other words, in addition to fulfilling your passions, she teaches you how to uh, make uh, money at it. Uh, she's had over 10 years of experience as an artist, crafter, um, and I can tell you we're going to ask her about this this morning. She has a developing competency in artificial intelligence she's been sharing with me uh, over the uh, past work. She's a veteran. Um, uh, disabled naval veteran. She uh, she served in Opera Operation Unified Response and Operation Iraqi Freedom and Operation Enduring Freedom. Um, she's, uh, of course, my partner in the startup series. First time I met Alice King, and Alice, I'm going to call you King Cuz going forward. Um, I, um, I wondered what a 30-year-old shredded professional trainer was doing operating a uh, website and a firm called 50 and Fit for folks over 50 years old, because obviously I uh, fit that uh, Democrat. It actually turns out he's 53 years old. And um, uh, actually, when he shows up in the picture here, you can see when he adds that white beard, you can begin to guess that perhaps he's not 25 or 30 years old. But if you <laughs> see him in his hood without that beard, you will, uh, you will have that. And plus, um, I've seen uh, a good deal of his social media activity to um, uh, show that he can really fake, uh, fake people out until he tells them how old he uh, is. I have, um, I've been able to work with him. Um, he's a veteran as well, 26 years, right? Us and, uh, and an amateur boxer for four years. So that's what he's leveraging in addition to his day-to-day uh, -day, uh, business. And I've, um, I've been able to uh, work with him on social media and all of that sort of stuff. What I really like about it too is you maintain a full-time job. And um, so those of you in the audience with part-time elements and trying to uh, leverage a business around day-to-day -day companies, he's done a real good job of parceling his time. Um, while you're in this, take a look at the web uh, on any of these folks and uh, uh, you'll see what I, uh, uh, what I mean from there. So um, I was gonna start um, and I'm going to start with, uh, with Clarence, uh, because actually I just want you to intro yourself, but I think everybody's interested in your, um, your, uh, how you use hip hop. And this is an accountant, my friends, a formal tax strategist who has done this. So pretty innovative thinking. Why don't you start us off, Clarence? Yeah. yeah. Uh, good morning, everyone. Glad to be here. My name is Clarence Harris, CPA. Some folks know me as Norfolk CPA. 
And <clears throat> before I was an accountant, I was a musician. You know, I played various instruments, saxophone, mellophone, was in the greatest marching band there is <laughs> that is called the Spartan Legion. Um, so, uh, you know, so music's always been a part of me, but, you know, as I've become a, have became a business professional entrepreneur, one of the creative things that I thought of, well, how can I merge both of these, these mm. concepts together? And so I've created music that's geared toward business, entrepreneurship, real estate, so all these various songs, so many songs, and so it reinforces, it reinforces the educational content that the business owners like us that we want, and that but we don't get to have from a music standpoint. So just just last week, I was at the what is it the was this the Marriott right down there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, at the Marriott at the Black Brand B Force Acceler Accelerator landing ceremony. And I had an opportunity to perform a couple of my, my pieces. I had one song called Write Off, and then another song called Funded, which is talks about creative financing outside of the traditional banking system. A lot of real estate concepts in there, different funding concepts, you know, going to trade lines, factoring accounts receivable, but it's I give it to you in a musical, lyrical fashion. So. And you do that in with music. Yes, I had a lot Gosh, of fans. To see <laughs> Tiffany, tell us about yourself. Oh, okay. Um, so not about my business. All right, so let's see about myself. I also was in the band. Um, and I know Manny. Uh, we actually played together with okay. the clarinet. So awesome woodwinds. <laughs> they didn't tell me this, folks. So, so you, know, it's a... you said you wanted to hear about, about okay. myself. Um, so I am also in music, but... Um, I sing, uh, and let's see, um, I am an artist. I um, love to dabble in technology and things like that. Um, I love to learn uh, new stuff uh, all the time, lifelong learner, and um, I don't know, I've always been interested in entrepreneurship. And so um, after I got out of, out of the military, I knew that I never wanted to work for someone else again. Um, <laughs> I was, um, completely opposed to structure, um, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense because in business you have to, there has to be some type of structure, but um, I, I fell in love with art. I fell in love with all types of disciplines of, um, of art, um, of creativity. And a uh, uh, little fact, my first business, um, actually my, official, my first official business was making uh, gift baskets. Um, about a month after my son was born. Uh, that lasted for a week. So, um, um, and then that just kind of snowballed into, um, into a skincare business. And then uh, later came my AI art and uh, my physical art and um, my uh, consulting business. So, um, so you are a practicing artist and you run the consulting business as yes. well, as mm -hmm. I know well. And yep. uh, I know that because I use her services when I'm working with uh, creative folks. So King Cuz, uh, tell us, um, tell us uh, about yourself and how you, uh, I, I'm intrigued as to where the name, and I think people will want to know how Ellis King became King Cuz <laughs> and you made that decision. So start us off there. Hey, well, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, my name is Ellis King, but King Cuz King. Oh, sorry, I got my Optimus Prime back here. He hear my voice. He <laughs> now you're I'm showing off. <laughs> I've seen this. That's right. But anyway, um, my my um my name King Cuz came from high school, and I was also in the band. I played the baritone and the tuba. Right, so we got all these musicians in the house. <laughs> <laughs> but, but um um. King Cuz, because um, my last name is King, and I was related to so many people in my high school, and they called me Cuz. So that's how <laughs> King Cuz came to be, right? Okay. But anyway, um, um, I'm a retired Navy veteran. I served for 26 years, and I've been retired now for over almost nine years. And I'm a defense contractor, basically doing the same thing I did in the military as far as cryptologic technician. And um, fitness has always been my passion. When I was in the military, I was always a command fitness coordinator for most of my commands, ensuring that my sailors are fit twice a year when they take the physical readiness test. 
And so it's been natural for me to always gonna stay fit and stay strong. When the pandemic happened and ever, all the gyms were secured, um, I was already doing virtual training, but it, it uh, came up a higher notch for the demand because of that. And I was doing social media on different other platforms and I decided to go ahead and start my own business and do 50 and fit. And like Bill said earlier, uh, this is the first year where I'm actually showing the gray hair because when I say I was 50, no one believed me, right? They say, no, this is a scam or whatever. So I started showing the natural gray to let them know I ain't no young buck, but I do enjoy working <laughs> out and staying fit. And I try to encourage everyone to say it's a lifestyle. It's not just a do it whenever you feel like it. It's part of your daily life. And the more you take care of your body, your body will take care of you. And that's been my testimony saying that uh, from the very beginning that when I was 18 years old, I never thought when I would turn 53 that I would look or feel the way I feel now. But because of the fact that I dedicated my time to health and fitness, that really was the um, turning point in my life to make sure that I share that information with everyone. So I'm um, working closely with Bill right now, and he's definitely been the mastermind in making sure that I am uh, articulating myself as a brand owner and to let people know um, the importance of health and fitness. Uh, since I've been talking to him, my YouTube has increased quite a bit. My social media platforms also has um, been rising and the demand signal for health and fitness is getting more, um, more in demand. And so I'm hoping and praying that I can continue to do this and then build myself a network of not just myself, but other people to, to collaborate with different types of exercises that can really incorporate everyone into feeling good about themselves. And I am very honored to be here today and I'm looking forward to learning more about uh, ways to improve our business. Thank you. Actually, I'm gonna be asking you, so you uh, <laughs> remember the show. Clarence, All right. yes, sir. You, could have been, you could have been a professional for CPA. Why did you start the business or take the entrepreneurial route? Well, actually, no, I, I, I didn't initially start the entrepreneurial route. So mm -hmm. I spent 10 years in corporate America. I used okay. to work right down there on Main Street uh, when the Icon Center was uh, Bank of America. So I worked 10 years in the finance and accounting department at Merce. If, you, if anybody has seen Captain Phillips, this, the movie about where the Somali pirates hijacked the US flagship. So I worked in that accounting department that did accounting for that vessel in Merce, Alabama. But after 10 years of being in corporate America, I said, you know what? I have to fire my job. I want to pursue my entrepreneurial endeavors. And that's exactly what I did in 2011. I fired my job. And then I just, one year, I just had fun. I went back to school, went back in the marching band as a 30 plus year old. You know, um, I made sure I worked out before I got to band camp. And then shortly after that, the next year, I partnered up with not two other CPAs. We started our CPA firm and we've been helping business owners and entrepreneurs with their accounting in Texas. Tiffany, now you said you didn't want to work for anybody else after you got out of the military. So remember that, King Cuss, is what it was about. <laughs> but um, you made um, the, uh, where, where did the artistry and all of that come from? And uh, how did you make that decision in terms of your product line? So um, in my family, I have two siblings uh, and I'm the oldest. Um, and uh, my brother has always been the artist, the visual artist. Um, actually, I think, uh, and I'm pretty sure my sister is gonna see this, but I don't think my sister's ever been artistic, but I have never thought of myself as a visual artist. Um, I was always the one that would sing. I mean, we all sang, but, I was really the one that sang. Uh, I didn't think of singing as an art. Um, and so um, during the pandemic, um, I realized that I needed something more than just singing. I was always in the house. I was always around my kids. I was, I literally, I was never by myself. Um, and um, as a disabled uh, veteran, I um, struggle with uh, depression and anxiety disorder. And um, during, the, during the pandemic, like everything stopped. Um, you couldn't really see any doctors there. I mean, they're just, everything stopped. And so I was essentially cut off from all of my um, lines of support in reference to the military. Um, and so I had to figure out a way to take care of myself mentally um, 
and it, it had to be, like I said, more than singing. Um, and so I, I just fell into painting. And the good thing is I could, um, even though, and I know a lot of parents deal with this sometimes, you love your kids, but there's, there's just too much sometimes. You have to have alone time. Um, but I felt guilty because I, I wanted alone time. And so what I did was I figured out a way to take care of myself and also spend time with my kids. And so my daughter and I started painting. My son, he's, he's about to be 16. So you know, <laughs> he's just like, I'm not, that's for kids. So um, it made me feel good. I didn't feel guilty anymore. It was something that, um, like I said, I was able to do with my daughter who just turned eight. So um, I got into painting and I started taking pictures and just how a lot of, lot of um, entrepreneurial endeavors begin, my family members were like, ooh, that's good. And I, in my mind, I was like, oh, well, I didn't do it because it looks good. I just did it because it, it makes me, it allows me to be free. It allows me to be spontaneous. It made me feel better. Um, and my daughter and I would show each other our paintings and things like that. And when other people outside of my family started saying, that looks really good, I was like, hmm. <laughs> so um, it. And then you learn to make money out. And then I learned to make money. I will say that I've always figured out how to make money out of creative endeavors. When the pandemic hit, I saw a gap in the market. I, I saw that big box stores weren't able to supply face masks. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, I might have though. So. Um, but I was able to jump on to that, uh, that gap. And my, the first month, I, I never made a face mask in my life. The first month I started making face masks, I made $5,000. Mm. So. <laughs> Here we go. King Cuts, uh, actually, there's a question uh, for you um, that uh, uh, is of interest. I um, have a question. It, given that you're part-time, you have a full-time job, is it is it your aspiration for the King Cuz brand to become um, something that you do full time, um, or how has that have, explain how that has fit and how you manage your part time uh, business um, with King Cuz with your um, with your uh, outside uh, career activities? Well, um, I telework from my job as a defense contractor. Since the pandemic happened, we were always working there, and for the past two years during the pandemic, we felt that we can work efficiently at home still without having to always drive to work every day and you know, sit in cubicles, right? Um, I do go to the base, I work in Oceana at least once a week because some of the stuff I do uh, is uh, classified, so I can't do it at home, of course. So at least once a week, I am able to go into the office and take care of any issues. But my job, as my part-time as being King Cuz 50 and fit, everything is done right here in my garage. I changed my garage into my gym. Right. And I do all my workouts in here. And so it worked out best for that. And it's good to have uh, the support from your command. Um, they know my business. They know what I'm trying to do. As a matter of fact, some of them are even clients of mine. So the fact that I have that type of support makes this transition from working part time and doing my business. Um, work, it works great. Uh, my goal eventually to um, I like to retire again from the government and then focus clearly mostly on my passion, which is health and fitness. And I, I want to build my um, my clientele and I really want to expand it and then collaborate with other people who does fitness um, in areas that I'm not really strong at, but I can get them together. Like I'm not a weightlifter. I don't do Pilates. I don't do yoga. But those are great exercises that a lot of people would like to do. And what I like to do is try to build my network and collaborate with people like that so that the King Cuts brand can stand out. Now my target audience is people around 50 and above. Um, I noticed that a lot of younger generations have this attitude that I'm almost invincible, you know, when that time comes. And my message is to say, now is the time to take care of your health and fitness because if you're not gonna pay for it now, you're gonna pay for it later, right? And so um, I like to be that poster man that says, this is an example of someone who really, truly took fitness as a personal journey, made it a lifestyle, and, and really enjoying life and making the most out of it. And you can do the same thing if you take the time out to treat your body the way you should treat it, eat the right foods, exercise, and et cetera. And I've been going to a lot of 
uh, campaigns and meetings. I went to Playlist in Orlando, Florida, which is a really big Instagram, TikTok, YouTube uh, event. And I brought my friend Optimus Prime with me and we have fun demonstrating you know, workouts because he does exercises with me. So I use that as a collaboration to let people know that exercise can be fun. This is my fourth rule when it comes to working out. Rule number one, you know, consult a physician first. Rule number two, stay hydrated. Three, push yourself, but know your limits. And the fourth and most important rule of all is to have fun. I'm always smiling. I love seeing the comments of my clients when we get done from a workout, we give each other a high five virtual and everything. And so that type of stuff really makes the job more uh, enjoyable and fun. And I like to do that full time eventually. Okay. Clarence, your niche markets now, when, when, when you're, when we talked a lot in the marketing elements about right. um, targeting individuals, what did you target once you became an entrepreneur? What are your specialties on the accounting side? Right. Well, when I started, <clears throat> this is, I'm very, I'm more niche now than when I started, mm -hmm. you know, starting off, you know, I, I just wanted to get some clients. So mm -hmm. Um, but what I found is when you become very niche and very skilled in what you do, then you can charge higher premiums. So right now, I tend to prefer to work with real estate investors. And part of that is I'm an active real estate investor, manage over you know close to 20 short-term rental properties, uh, things like VRBO, Airbnb. So I don't think there's a lot of CPAs who are as operationally knowing about that as I am. So if you happen to be in that industry, I would be the person that you should talk to. Otherwise, you know, you might be in the trucking industry and I actually will refer you to a CPA who's more dedicated to trucking. So focus, I, I hope everybody focus and then you differentiated yourself and uh, into a specialty um, over time. Absolutely. And in and, and, and my, my focus, the, the different focuses tend to be what I happen to like. So it's very, you know, when I started to do other niches, home-based businesses, okay, and MLM companies. Well, I've been in MLMs and network marketing, so I'm very familiar with that. So let me start there. And then uh, obviously musicians, you know, it's very easy for me to connect with a musician because I am a musician. So now I can give them, you know, okay, hey, if you go to the studio and you're paying, you know, for this session, this is going to be a write-off. You know, you got to buy reads for your clarinet, but you're doing it's it right because you're- tax strategies. Right, that's right. Right, absolutely. So you all can see the value here. You work with home-based businesses and, and things like that. And you've seen uh, King Cuz has turned his garage um, at his home into a studio. If we go from there. Tiffany, tell us about artificial intelligence. Where do you hear this, folks? <laughs> <laughs> okay, artificial intelligence in reference to what specifically? Mm, to your art and how it uh, helps you proliferate that. So um, I, I don't know how much everyone is into artificial intelligence um, and the reemergence of it um, in the creative space, but uh, as I had said before, I started out as a visual artist, like painting, um, and I did abstract acrylic painting um, in resin pieces. Um, and because I like to learn new things, I found um, this program called uh, Dolly, and this is Dolly 1, and I know Dolly 2 has already come out. But I started with Dolly. I um, applied to be, because at the time they were in beta, they had a waiting list, um, and so I applied to be on the waiting list. Um, and I finally got the email um, that I was accepted, like I could test the, the program. I tested this program and I was like, this is amazing. Um, if, no, if you don't know what Dolly is, essentially it is a, uh, an artificial program that allows you to use text that is then turned into um, in a visual image. Um, and so... For the most part, um, actually, I've never seen an image be regenerated and be the same exact one. I honestly don't think that you would ever get the same image. Um, you can use the same prompt, but you will always get a different image. And so I was like, this is amazing. And so I started searching for other programs like that. Um, and now my main program is Mid Journey. 
Um, and there's many other programs, Stable Diffusion um, is another one. Um, there's many other programs that you can kind of um, dabble in and test and, and have fun with. But the way that I've incorporated artificial intelligence into my art business is, uh, again, I started out as an abstract artist because I wanted people to be, I wanted myself to be able to see a certain thing. But I also wanted my customers to be able to see whatever they saw. Because that painting, in my opinion, paintings are very uh, intimate. Um, a lot of customers, I had this one painting at a show one time, and a lot of customers would come up and say, I see a goat. And I'd be like, I have no clue where this goat is, but I see a horse. And it literally, it, it, I love the, the way that art connects with people. Um, but like I said, I'm this huge nerd when it comes to technology and new things. And when I found AI uh, programs like Midjourney um, and Dolly, I was like, this is just, I mean, again, they're not, artificial intelligence in the creative space is not new. But it is center stage right now. And so that's how I use artificial intelligence with my uh, artwork. Now with my consulting business, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother yeah. element. We're going from there. Yeah. The, uh, well, hold there. Um, uh, King Cuz, um, you, you have a nice product line. Um, explain how the, um, you developed the, uh, your product line and your 30 day challenge and those types of things. And, and, how you're getting it at the 50 and fit, because I know your social media has attracted all ages. Yeah, that is true. Um, I can say when I was in the military, the command fitness coordination piece doing exercises that is really requiring equipment was essential, especially when you had to see a lot, right? Because we don't have, some ships don't have gyms or whatnot. So we had to do what we can to um, stay fit. But um, I started the 30 day fitness challenge because for people who are kind of hesitant about fitness, you know, and they're like, well, I know I need to do something, but I don't know what, how to begin. And I figured that the best way to get people started is to do kind of steady exercises that requires no equipment, but focus on the technique and the style. So the 30 day challenge is like every other day, I show um, my clients the exercise for your upper body, your core, and your legs. And we do cardio in between sets, right? And every day, uh, add on a new exercise, you know, for the upper body, another exercise for the core and the legs. So I don't let them know this at the end, but at the end of the 30 challenge, they will learn at least 30 different exercises for your upper core and legs that can really get them to that level where they feel like, okay, I'm seeing some results. I'm getting energy. What's the next phase? And then the next phase would be doing one-on-one -on -one personal training with me. Um, I've so far been doing everything virtual. But I, um, I got my garage set up now so I can actually get clients in the garage and work out with me. So that's my next phase to try to get that going. But um, when I was doing virtual during the pandemic, um, I had clients from India, clients from um, Dubai, Brazil, uh, Argentina. And it was really nice to say that they could come globally and see my workouts. Um, because of the time zones, I couldn't do it at all the time. So I had a certain time where they had to do to see the live broadcast. And I always saved the broadcast for the whole 30 days so they can go back and look at it as many times as they like. But I was, I was impressed to see some of my clients who got up early in the morning because they liked the energy from watching the videos that they really want to be a participant of the live events. And so that's what really got me more uh, motivated to hear uh, clients that would get up early in the morning just to you know, see these type of workouts. Um, and I still network with other brands and other companies like uh, Live Me and Uploud was on other social media platforms, but they've given me a platform and have me being featured on a lot of my fitness shows. I have a fitness show this Thursday. Um, the last time I got done, I had over 8 million viewers watching that and that's global. So my name is out there, the exposure out there, people are asking questions, but um, I'm not quite sure um, if someone made that statement earlier though, but you gotta have the right type of people to get that type of energy. I have turned down clients that was in it for other alternative motives instead of really focusing on fitness. Because when you're doing virtual training, when you see people chatting more than working out, you know they're not really doing the exercises and it takes the energy away from a virtual trainer. So I always sit those individuals in the side later on and say, look, um, I appreciate your participation, but we really um, we can't be distracted with other things while people are working out. 
and it takes away the energy. So I've refunded members. I've turned away members away because uh, that energy is, it's, it's a must, especially for virtual, because a lot of people in the past were like, well, I have to be face to face with somebody before I see results. But now I'm proving that otherwise. If I have people from around the world tune into my broadcast and want to work out with me, uh, that has a lot of weight. So I prefer to do more virtual now because I can hit a large, audit, large audience at one time. But eventually, you know, since the pandemic is here to stay, we're not going anywhere. Um, I don't mind getting one or two people to come in and do one-on-one -on -one, because I know some people really need that one-on-one -on -one interaction in fitness. And as long as I'm not getting beat down or overworked, um, I can do that. But the virtual is really, really great. And um, it, it worked out really well for me because the demand signal was there and I was able to provide with them that demand. Right, and, and energy in the room, even in the virtual room, right? Exactly. So I have three or four questions coming over the chat and, and uh, for all three of you now. Um, funding your startup, how did you do that? What, what was the thought process you went through to make sure you had enough money to at least initiate the uh, small business venture? Right. Well, I'll pick one of the, the ventures that I have. Um, let's start with accounting practice. So we each came to the table with $2,000. Okay. And one of the key things that I, I will tell business owners is to even know how much you need to come to the table with, you need to go through the process of doing a financial forecast. So we need to estimate what do we think our sales are going to be. And I would recommend business owners do this for at least a two year period and probably break it down on a monthly basis. What do I think my my sales coming in every month is going to be for the next 24 months? And what do I think my cash outflows related to all my various expenditures are going to be? Based on that, now you, you know what your cash inflows and outflows are going to be for a specific period of time. And now you can come up with the strategy of, okay, here's my dollar need. Okay, do I need to, how do I get that dollar need? So, so it's very good. There. And I hope everybody heard that 12 month projection. Thank you very much for that. That yeah. was unsolicited, but uh, <laughs> coming from a financial professional, that counts for uh, thought. Uh, Tiffany, how, how, you've been funding multiple <laughs> things and yes. seeking private investors and everything. Uh, tell people uh, your, uh, your uh, experience with, uh, with the uh, money side of the equation. So as an artist, um, my that venture is funded, well, started out being funded by um, family investments uh, and really customer financing um, or customer funding. Um, and then other my other uh, streams of revenue. So coming from a nine to five, um, my uh, consulting, same thing, customer funding. So um, and nine to five, I would. Uh, use my income from my nine to five, pay for software that I was using and things like that, office supplies. And then my cut, my clients would pay me for one-on-one -on -one or group coaching or an online program. And then I would just use that um, funding, that, that money to pay myself and then reinvest the rest into the business. That's very good. Yeah. Very good. So, so you've used, you've got customers to pay perhaps a percentage up front as well. Is, uh, for um, for consulting, yeah, yeah, very good, very good. So you can see the bootstrap mechanisms and things like that. King Cuz, when you got started, how'd you do it? Yeah, when I did, it was really all on me. I'll be honest. Um, um, I went and paid for legal Zoom to get my LLC and get all the documentation for um, business license and all that started. Um, I did invest money again for merchandise. Um, I sell King Cuz hoodies, you know, keychains anything to help promote my brand. Um, and then it was a slow turn of getting clients, you know, dedicated clients. I get a trickle of people at first, but now the demand signal is getting higher and now I'm starting to get more clients to come in. Um, I like uh, what the gentleman said earlier about making sure you have your thing out spread out for a whole 12 years. I wasn't doing that. Um, everything was being uh, just base to base, but I really think that's very, very important. Um, and right now I'm starting to see things balance out I invested a lot of my money on um, hiring um, professional fitness, you know, people to give me insights on how to do strategies and stuff like that. Um, a lot of it was a lot of common sense stuff, but I'm glad I went through that process. It was a learning curve. And now I'm better prepared to um, 
uh, change the inputs and the, uh, the money I put into my business to see the turnaround and see, okay, all right, now I'm starting to see things balancing out uh, because of I'm getting more clientele. But um, I would highly recommend that you do take your time and see what the whole status is gonna be as far as what your goal is um, and how much money you have that's not gonna hurt you in the future. Um, all the money that I invested in was money that I knew that I can do this without um, you know, missing a mortgage payment or not paying a credit card debt and all that kind of thing. So it was all on me, but some people do get grants and other scholarships, I mean, other um, funding to get things done. But I highly encourage that you do take the time out to articulate, to know what it is that you want, your goals are, and then your expenditures. So in a nutshell, it's been all on me. Very good. And I, I, have, a, I have a great question here uh, for all three of you. Um, the uh, and uh, keep in mind everybody online you can post in chat as well as your direct lines to me the um interesting question what did you do in the past few months that's one of the smartest things that you ever did for your business and that's tiffany king because that's coming to you yeah one of the smartest things that i've done in the past few months mm -hmm. says in the past few months that's what okay we'll, we'll go with that you got to have your, I, I call it your client team, CPA, lawyer, insurance, marketing banker. You got to have the right. Yes, team. remember that. That was in the course. Another verification from a certified <laughs> CPA here. Thank you very yeah, much. You got to have the right team around you. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I went, I broke the rule and I did some contracts and I didn't have the attorney on the front end. And I, I had to pay. And so what I have done in the past few months have built a, a very solid relationship with a strong attorney. I have a couple of attorneys I work with, but a really strong attorney. And now I go to her and, and she's looking at everything and it's like, man, I should have just did this from the gate. So made a mistake, but corrected it, right? Yeah. It happens all the time in business. Yeah, all, yeah. All so, so, so the answer is specifically involve the attorney on the front end or the CPA, or the insurance, or the banker. Involve them on the front end. Right. Tiffany, smartest thing you've done, you can't use AI. <laughs> oh, man. Um, <laughs> that was going to be my answer. Um, the smartest thing that I have done in the past a few months is allow my team to actually do what they were hired for. Um, I have a bad habit of being a control freak. Um, and uh, as an artist, I, I do have a team. Um, Granted, the good thing is my team takes care of all of my business ventures. Um, and no, my team, they're not employees, they're all freelancers from all across the world. Um, and I, um, my assistant, she is in Brazil. And um, I have given everyone, especially her, the permission to tell me, stop it. Don't, stop doing what you're doing. Um, and essentially virtually yell at me um, because it's a bad habit that I have to change. Um, because if I get burned out, I'm the center, I'm literally the core of all of my businesses. <clears throat> and so without me, there are no business businesses. Um, and so that is literally the smartest thing. Um, the, I guess the a supplement to that is um, what I see a lot of people that they don't do is um, annotate or not annotate, but um, record in some way their processes and systems. Uh, in order for my team to do what I hired them to do, they have to understand how to um, how things go in my business. And so that um, what has helped my team do what they were hired to do is I record everything. And I essentially cre uh, created a, a training program and they have access to all of those at any time. Um, and that has cut down on the time that they need for me to explain things. It's because I record everything that I do. Um, and then I give them this vast library of, of videos that they can watch. So uh, the smartest thing that I've done in the past few months is allowing my team to do their jobs. Mm. Very good, very good. King Cut, smartest thing you've done in the past three or four months? Um, the, I'll say in diving into places where they wasn't expecting me to go mm. and promoting my brand so people can see me more. Uh, I was at Orlando, Florida just last week at a playlist event. Um, and I bought my friend Optimus Prime there. I sat right in the lobby, programmed them, started working out with Optimus Prime. People was walking by. I was passing out my flyers, passing out business cards. Um, 
people was engaged. And that event, some people went to the whole process and you know, registered, blah, 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 which is good. However, I just did everything right in the lobby. I knew if I do this right here, people walking by, they're gonna see me, they're gonna see what's going on. And that immediately raised my awareness. Um, I have a YouTube channel now that has over 6 million views of me just having fun with my, my new friend, Optimus Prime. But at the same time, it gave them an opportunity to know who I was, King Cuz. So I wiggled up my way into something that I knew that um, um, is gonna benefit me at the same time. But on, a, on the same token, Robeson, the robot company that built this, I have affiliated marketing with them. And so they made a promo code, King Cuz, so anybody who wanted to purchase it, they'll say $250. See, so now I'm putting my brand everywhere. You're gonna see everywhere. King Cuz on a lot more events, a lot more uh, areas, because I dove in and made the decision to do this myself, right? And that boldness and confidence is something that you gotta have as an entrepreneur. You can't let fear uh, stop you from doing the things that you know that you are passionate about. And so that driven, um, powerful statement is important in any business. And I encourage everyone to do what their heart desire is, have that passion, have that drive, and keep going forward. Is Optimus Prime easy to fire up over there or just to uh, give them a hit at what you've got there? Or is it a big oh, yeah, sure. Hold on. I'm, let me bring the camera over. Let me turn them on. You can see them transform. I don't know if I can see them now. Turn the power on. And then you get, yeah. Out to the just front. created a craze on social media for us. Transform. So. <clears throat> I'm gonna show you what one of the things we did at the uh, show real quick. Because um I was doing push-ups with him. I can't do them now because she's on the table, so you won't see me do it at the same time, but you can see him do push-ups. <laughs> Come on, knock him out. Let's go. I think it's prime. Let's go. <laughs> now, folks, that's Brandy. Okay, yeah. let's go to that fence there. Um, and I'll show you one more exercise. I said, we got to make sure you do this abs. So you can do an ab exercise for y'all real quick. Oh, my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 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 All right, side to side, let's go. Side to side, keep it going. <laughs> I remember the first time we talked about that. For some reason, I thought he was bigger. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Very good. Um, good question for all three again, too. Um, time management, your, your, your life, um, between business and all its demands, family, all of those sort of things. How does that work out for you? How do you deal with it? How does that work out for me? How do I deal with it? I deal with it by just trying to get everybody involved. <laughs> I know that's probably that the, the, the optimal answer, but no, I, um, you know, being in the, now I'm talking more about the real estate and property management business. Um, it, it's been a great way for, you know, my spouse, she's involved. She leads our, our cleaning crews and, um, and also, interacting with our guests, our children, even folks who are on our staff. We bring our children to all of the properties and, and it's good for them to see. Like one of my nephews, he asked me, but why you have so many properties? Well, this is, we want them to see that this is, this should be the norm. So um, how do I balance it? I just try to get a lot of people involved and, and I tell, I tell other business owners, you know, listen, I know it's cool to hang out with your friends, but you have certain goals that you want to attain. And so how, if you want folks to hang out with you, if they care about you, here's my goals. I need you to help me get these goals. And, oh, and really that we can good. spend time together. Tiffy, you balance a whole lot. Uh, yeah. Give us an idea of what uh, your time management is like. Um, at first, it was horrible. Um, because being an entrepreneur takes a lot of your time um, away from everyone, unless you're, you're good enough to, to get everyone involved. Um, 
And so at first I spent a lot of time by myself um, and that took a lot of time away from my kids and the rest of my family. Um, but uh, now because I go to a whole lot of art shows, craft fairs, um, most of my consulting is done virtually. Um, I've made the kids have businesses. And so now every year it's an assignment that they must create. If not, if they do not create a new business venture, they have to continue with the venture that they started the year prior. Um, so my daughter, um, she is an artist. Um, she does abstract painting as well. Um, but next year we're gonna actually, yeah, next summer we're gonna um, open her very first lemonade stand. Um, like a traveling lemonade stand. Um, she wants to get a food truck, but I'm like, I need you to like start on a bike first. Um, my son, um, he actually just started his own uh, gaming development company this past summer with his friends. Um, but before that, um, the way that we all kind of stayed involved with each other as entrepreneurs is um, he had, he's a sophomore in high school, but as a freshman, he was able to take some college level tests. And I told him I wasn't paying for it. And his dad wasn't paying for it either. And so he had to figure out a way to make money with his business venture. And so he started learning about how to make candles. And um, I told him in, in order to learn about uh, communications, positive you know, customer service and all of that, connecting with your customer, your target audience, um, he had to go to an event and he had to give away his candles. But in order to get people to his table, he had to learn how to speak to them and engage with them. He made $300 giving away candles mm. that day. No allowance in the Richardson household. <laughs> you go out and you start your own business to be able to think because tell them your time management element because you um, you uh, you have to con you, you have to keep your time well contained given that there is a uh, outside occupation that uh, <clears throat> has to be handled. Explain what you do and how you manage your time to uh, be able to make money with your clients. Yeah, um, my clients so far, they are family members, close friends, and associates of mine. They know my schedule, and they are very flexible with my schedule. So that really helps, first of all. But you're right. It is, you got to have time management, right? Um, I wish, because I say I wish I was more than, I can clone myself and be at two places at one time and do this and that. But I have to make it, um, the realization and know that I'm only one person. And so the dedication and the focus I have before I begin any workout session, um, I have to be that driven person. It's like when I was amateur boxer before we get in the ring, before we fight, I'm sure y'all seen boxers training and they got the mindset of what they got to do before they step into the ring. I'm that same way before I start doing my broadcast when it comes to health and fitness. And I learned not to juggle my, sorry, I learned not to juggle my, um, my personal, issues with my work issues. I try to keep each jar, um, one jar open, one jar closed, right? And when I'm done with that one jar, then I focus my time and doing personal things. Um, so you have to have that. Otherwise, uh, you will let your job consume you to the point where you're not focused. And so, and that's discipline. That's all I got. It takes, it takes discipline and surround yourself with the right type of people. I always say I like to hang with the uh, eagles and not the buzzards and the crows because you know they would definitely drain you out if you allow them to do that. So I, I encourage people to stay focused, uh, maintain your passion. Don't let your passion be a burden or burn you down. And so, and again, having a job as a defense contractor where I can telework at home is definitely the biggest blessing I had to me to able to do my job at home and to uh, you know juggle both simultaneously without having too much of an impact on one or the other. Very good, very good. Um, so you can see from all three folks how important the time management is. Viola posted the importance of connections in her business. When you started, Clarence, what were your most important connections? Sounds like you had a couple of partners and that that we're working with. Yeah, yeah, so I started with, with two other partners, but then what I also did when I was a junior in college in the late 90s, um, I used to intern for a mortgage officer and he was part of a business networking group and he would have me go with him and start representing him. And I was so fascinated with that, you know, all these business owners, they would come together and they would help, you know, give each other referrals. And I said, wow, when I start my business, I want to do that. And that's what we did in 2013 amongst other things. So I would say, you know, networking, building 
referral partners, getting involved in different business groups, going out, educating folks on what your business is, just doing that, you know, the education. So those things are the critical things that I think. Very good, very good, good. To be your most important connections now, Holland. Um, my most important connections, let's see, my friends, because most of my friends are business owners. Um, oh, really? okay. in different, okay. in different Other industries. entrepreneurs. Then. Other entrepreneurs, okay. yeah. Um, and a close second would be uh, people in my community, um, who, who most of them that I know are entrepreneurs in some way or, or asp aspiring entrepreneurs. And so when I go to a lot of these shows, a lot of these markets and things, um, people are amazed, uh, kind of tuning my own horn, people are amazed about how I set things up. Um, they want to know, uh, I haven't, I've had many people come to me and ask me, um, how do you, how did you price your stuff? Um, and these are older people where I, I automatically think oh, you've been in this business longer than I have. And you're asking me how I price my stuff. Um, and so a, a lot of my most important connections are people that are either where I am or aspiring to be where I am. Um, and then of course, the third, I guess, pillar are people like you. Um, uh, granny, you're an entrepreneur, so I guess you're part of the second group anyway. Um, people, like you said, people that are um, essentially birds of a feather flock together. And so you always want to be, your connection should be um, people that are where, really people that are where you are or that are ahead of you. Um, and so all three of those are, are my important, most important connections. Because you've had an interesting experiences with, um, uh, with social media, both good and bad, like you said, in the energy in the room, but uh, connect that in with the connections and things like that you're making as you're uh, developing your business, perhaps the most important people, perhaps the social media sites you've had most and least success with. Well, uh, to piggyback what Tiffany is saying earlier, fa family is key. Um, I come from a large family, 11 brothers and sisters, right? Uh, seven of them have participated in my workout sessions and they put out um, great feedback to other people to engage. So having that support is, you know, is unmatched. So family by far is my main driving mechanism for doing fitness. Um, and we all can relate because our mom was only 49 when she passed away from a heart attack. Um, and so the awareness of telling people about your health and important staying healthy is, it resonates with us very well. Oh, very good, very good. So that's one thing. Now, when it comes to um, social media, yeah, I have uh, good moments and bad moments, but when you deal with social media, so you're dealing with society, so you can deal with the good and the bad. I just say focus on the positive and don't give the negative energy. And that's what keeps me uh, focused. Um, I have a lot of people sign up for my classes for alternative motives, right? They think it's a dating site or they want to know more about me uh, instead of what I'm trying to give them for as fitness. And I you know, respectfully you know, turn down their offers and stuff because that's not what I'm all about. And staying true to yourself and not chase the money. Some people got this mindset that, you know, uh, if it don't make dollars, it don't make sense, right? And I'm like, mm, memories to me outweighs money any day. And the fact that I have great memories with my clients and my families, knowing that they know that I'm doing something I'm very passionate about and helping people change their lives, knowing that I can't change the whole world, but if I can change the mindset of a few people to take their health and fitness seriously, and they make those changes, to me, it's priceless. And so with that type of mindset, that really keeps me going. So that's my main driving mechanism right now for my business. Very good, very good. Um, for everyone online in the room, I did promise um, our entrepreneurs I would keep this to an hour. So uh, I hope you felt about it. I'd like to finish, Clarence, with asking all three of you just to comment um, the most important piece of advice you might offer uh, the startups or the folks in the room going forward. Oh, wow. Hmm. The most important, never take rule number three of my upcoming book, 10 Rules for Entering a Business Startup Game. Number three, don't take free advice from the uneducated. Don't take free advice from who? The uneducated. From the uneducated. Free free advice that's from rule number three. Who, yes, free okay, advice. Okay, so folks, now you know we have, what's rule number one or rule number two? Uh, rule number one is get the proper mindset. Rule number two is the importance of goal setting. Very good, very good. How many rules are there? Ten. Ten. Yeah. 
I'll go through. Okay, the I didn't say just now. <laughs> <laughs> the most important, most important ones. Those are very good. That's um, the most important thing um, is what you and I were talking about earlier. Your why. Um, so my uh, as a consultant, I focus on the business model canvas, um, and number one is your why. A lot of people uh, may think that understanding why you do what you do oh. is not important, mm -hmm. um, but trust me, I guarantee your customers want to know and value the story, your brand story, the story behind why you became an entrepreneur and why you started your business. If you don't understand your why, your customers aren't going to understand your why. They're not going to be able to really engage and connect with you on an intimate level to the point where um, they're going to want to follow you no matter what you do, where you go. Um, and that's really what you want. You want loyal customers so that you can stay in business and you're able to connect with them. And so my one thing that I would tell you to do, if you do not remember anything else, please sit down and um, brainstorm and come up with your why so that you can communicate um, your primary existence as an entrepreneur to your customers. Very good. King Cuz, I always tell everybody, never let feelings or fear interfere with the facts. Mm -hmm. The fact is that if you got something you want to present to the world, do it. Don't try, do. That's what I tell everybody, you know, because that's that's so important. Um, I don't know who said it, but someone made a comment that if you talk, the day you die, you talk to the same person who you are now and the person that you could have been, how would that conversation end? And that's resonated with me so much because when I have an opportunity to be better, the person doing who I am right now, I wanna take opportunity to do the most I can so that on my dying bed, I can say I've achieved everything that I think possible and have no regrets because I didn't let feelings or fear interfere with that. So as entrepreneurs, you gotta have that. You gotta have that leap of faith you got to have that drive, and I encourage you to continue to do that. Excellent. So no fear, know your why, and make sure that you always talk with people that know what they're talking about. Plus, we have nine other rules. In <laughs> fairness, I did tell them I would only keep them for an hour, folks, but uh, I'm going to be asking that next time, Clarence, yes, so we'll go from there. Um, Ellis, King Cuz, thank you very much. Tiffany, of course, you mm -hmm. know how we work together, and, and, and Clarence Harris, you're just a value to Norfolk State and to the Small Business Development Center. Thank you very much today. Thank, Thank all of you for attending. We go back.